Hi everybody! Hi Tamar! Welcome to our breakdown of Euron! Euron Greyjoy, the second son of someone someone Greyjoy, the younger brother of King Balon of the Iron Isles. He's nicknamed Crow's Eye. Mm -hmm. We know him a little bit from the books. Mostly from the books. Mostly from the books. He has one eye missing, so he has like a pirate patch, which is very awesome. I'm, I'm really looking forward to see, the, to see that in the show. Yeah. So he left the Iron Isles some years ago mm -hmm. after he slept with his brother, with his younger brother's wife. Mm -hmm. So he had to leave to flee because his younger brother wanted to kill him. Right. Yeah. Uh, and that younger brother is, no, is not uh, in the show. And he came back just to murder his brother. Dun, yeah. dun, dun. In the books, it's a little bit more uh, ambivalent. So who is Euron? What do we know about Euron? He's an exiled uh, prince, basically. Uh, Though he wasn't a uh, prince at the time, yeah, he was a okay. lord. Right, yeah. Good this, this, yeah. <laughs> this way. Mm -hmm. I earned mm -hmm. my salary today. Mm -hmm. He traveled around the world, uh, which is quite rare uh, during that time. Going abroad, like traveling and seeing these exotic places. Right. He went to the Jade Sea. Well, Carthys traveled the, the Smoking Sea, where Valyria uh, sunk, you know. Okay, and you're not supposed to go there because it's supposed to be like super dangerous. Yeah, and cursed, and there are like worms and maybe right. like but that. But he went there, he, he went inland, mm -hmm. and he found some stuff. He found he some stuff. So he's an adventurer, explorer a little mm -hmm. bit maybe. He, he says in the books that he even got uh, his hand on a dragon egg. But he threw it away to the sea on a moment of uh, rage or something like that. Okay. Which cool. tells you about his character, that uh, maybe he's a liar, because <laughs> who throws something like that? Or, or he's probably like a capricious, impulsive, a anger, anger management management problem. Individuals that travel around the world during uh, medieval times is quite rare. Normally, no one needs to leave uh, his home unless you are an adventurer or a pirate. Or uh, a merchant. One of the most famous uh, explorers of uh, the medieval uh, times was uh, Marco Polo. Marco? Marco? He uh, supposedly uh, went to China. Why to supposedly? Ah, there are debates uh, on that, you know. On, the no. jury is still out, you know. No. Some people say that he brought back what would eventually become spaghetti. Yeah, the noodles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When they introduced him in the show, they made this. Uh, Odyssey uh, reference. Okay. You know about Odysseus or Ulysses, depends uh, who you ask. Okay. Uh, he's a hero of Troy, of the Trojan War, and it took him something like uh, 10 years to come back after right. the war. Had a lot of adventures. A lot of adventures, went to a lot of exotic places. Like with a one eyed like a yeah. cyclops. The cyclops, yeah. Part of the story, he asked his crew to tie him uh, to the pole in order for him to listen to the song of the siren, mm. while everyone else on board. But why did he have to tie himself? Because the siren songs, they uh, mm. invite you to the sea. And to die. To die. So Euron said that he, that he was tied by his crew uh, to, uh, to the pole because mm -hmm. he was a little bit crazy. Yeah. So kind of a similarity. It took 10 years for this years to come back. And when he came back, he discovered that uh, everyone thought he was dead. Mm. And there was a lot of suitors for his wife, Penelope, okay. in order to take uh, his property. Okay. So uh, it's very similar, you know, in the, that sense that Euron is coming back after a long, long uh, time, right. like a couple of years or something like that. And when he comes back, there is no king. Mm. And there is a woman... Ooh, who wants, wants to, uh, to uh, living in ancient Greece during that time, uh, listening to all of these uh, stories, all of these stories about uh, Odysseus. Like the tales and adventures far away. Far, far places. away. He went to this place that if you are uh, going a little bit east, you will fall uh, off the edge of the world or something like that. And there, there are these sirens and cyclops and gods uh, on the edge of this of civilization. So it's very exciting. It's very similar to Euron from the point of view of the Iron Island Islanders, when they hear about all these exotic places like Ashai and the Smoking Sea and the Cars, Jade Sea and right. Cars, like the biggest city and stuff right, like that. Right, right, right. So it's very exciting to meet someone who traveled these places. Right, um, but here in the story, it's all these stories are real because he brought back 
all kind of magic artifacts and some of his crew are kind of magic or blood magic type. He brought some warlocks with him. Some warlocks, mm -hmm. right. And give right. him the uh, shade of the evening, a very potent drug that expands your mind. I heard. Basically, how I see him, he's like, like a Joffrey or Ramsey, but smart and cunning, like a master manipulator. He's not dumb. He doesn't do stupid things. He plans things out, as he obviously did here, mm -hmm. uh, coming back uh, to the Iron Islands exactly at the right time. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's more like uh, Littlefinger, maybe? Okay. Just with a better uh, deck of cards. Okay, like I see that. Nobility, I can see that. High, no high noble... Uh, okay, you know. but he's a little bit crazier than Littlefinger because he believes he is the god, he yeah. is god. And when Balon tells him uh, about the, the, the drowned god, he says, I am the storm. I am the storm, brother. According to uh, the Iron Islanders' uh, religion, there are two gods. Okay. It's a dualistic uh, religion. Okay. Like there is this uh, drowned god. This is our national god. The, the good god. The good god is he's on our side, you know. Right. Uh, he helps us uh, fish. He uh, helps us not to drown and stuff Save, like that. Right. And if we are dr and if we drown, it's okay because we are going back to the sea and stuff like okay. that. And his mortal enemy, literally, mm. or his immortal enemy, Ooh. is the storm god. Mm. Boo. Yeah. Boo. Yeah. The Lord of Light uh, religion is a dualistic religion and it's based, loosely based right. on uh, the Zoroastrian. Right. There's the Lord of Light and then the other, the great yeah. other. It's right. like uh, in Christianity you have Satan who stands alone, has his own fo uh, followers and, and uh, false and powers like us. Against uh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but Euron is a crazy man. Okay. He has like something like of a Jesus complex. Mm, that's dangerous. Or a Jeru Jerusalem syndrome. Like okay. he thinks he's the Messiah or something like that. Megalomaniac. Very old, mega, 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 mega megalomaniac. <laughs> <laughs> he's not like his brother. Like, okay, I want uh, to go to the old ways of the Vikings slash right. Iron Island, like to pillage and plunder and right. raid. This is mine. This little, uh, little uh, piece of land is mine. Yeah, yeah. And for glory and song and stuff like that. Euron is different. He thinks he's God or something like so that. So what does that mean? It means he will pay, play maybe a significant uh, role in this uh, story. Right. Uh, he's here to stay. He's not like for one season and that's it. I wouldn't rule out the fact that maybe he's right. About being a part of a divine plan? Yeah, maybe he's, a truly, maybe he's truly a servant of the other god. Right. Uh, maybe he does have these special powers. Maybe he's some kind of a priest or have priestly powers. Right. Going from this uh, right. evil uh, force. So if he, if he serves the storm god, the storm god is the great other of the drowned god. Mm -hmm. So that's a clue. So we can go a long way uh, with his ambitions. And we saw that in the King's Moot, mm -hmm. one of the best episodes of the book series, in my humble opinion. Yeah, so the King's Moot, uh, it's like a, <clears throat> a convention to elect the king. Okay. Uh, when there is not a clear uh, heir, okay. uh, like this uh, case. And from the books, we know that uh, there is this King's Moot, very dramatic uh, moment. Everyone's trying to convince, uh, ah, I will give you that, I will give you that. Very similar to the way Germanic uh, chieftains were elected. Okay. Um, uh, or, like they, or like they called it, Führers. They did call it that? Mm -hmm. Back Fu then? A Führer is someone who was elected uh, like that, to lead oh the God. tribe. Oh my God. It's a, it's a democratic uh, process. It really exposes, in my view, the bug, uh, the bug in the app called democracy. Yeah, like uh, Yara, she, she makes sense when she talks to the people. She says, okay, let's cut our losses. This didn't work out. Let's sue for peace. Mm -hmm. And let's, let's go back to, to things as normal. And he says, ah, you want this incremental, uh, incrementalism? I will give you the world. I will give you Westeros. Right. I will give you dragons. Right. And then, and then, then they, they, go, they go crazy. Ooh. And then there's the horn. Like the big shofar. Yeah, up until the modern time, mm -hmm. like the last 100, 200 years, democracy was a dirty word. The concept of democracy had a lot of uh, negative connotation to it. Really? Because okay. you can translate democracy to mob rule. Mm. 
or like the people's rule, but the people during that time is, the, you know, the, the dirty ones, the stupid ones, so, the masses. So, so what did they call that uh, back in uh, Athens? They called it uh, isonomia, which is equality uh, under the law. Okay. And they had isogoria, which is basically uh, the freedom of speech, the freedom to say whatever we want okay. without uh, consequences. This is how they call the, the, their system of government. Democracy mm. was coined by the critics of democracy mm. from that time, like Aristotle, mm. Plato. The king's mood, basically we see that after Yara speaks reasonably and in the books, Victorian uh, offers to, to, to stay the course, then comes along this demagogue mm -hmm. and his horn is basically like symbolic to this demagoguery mm -hmm. and, he say, and he promises everything, everything and then people change their minds, hey, 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 mm -hmm. hey, I want this guy. No, it was more like So basically, <clears throat> democracy doesn't work. Part of the criticism they learned the Greeks had uh, against democracy, oh, they really saw this connection between a democratic government and the enthusiasm towards <gasps> war. Uh. So they had this uh, connection inside their mind that democracy leads to war because people are easily convinced mm. and are easily agitated and uh, motivated you know, by demagogues. I would say that the real democracy would be when people would vote on straight on policies and not for people who then would disappoint them by not doing anything. Just vote on the policies. And we have a vote today because we don't have a bold prediction for Euron. We try to think about something, we didn't find anything interesting. So if you have predictions for Euron, please put them on the board. Put them on the board. We will take your prediction. And we will not give you to credit. We will steal them from you. Like. So, if you enjoyed the video, please click like. We want a lot of likes so more people can watch our videos. That would be very helpful. Another thing that would be helpful is if you support our show, if you want to. There's a link to our Patreon page in the description. That would be very nice of you. And we would be very thankful. And if you want to learn more about the Iron Islands as a whole, here is a video about the Iron Islands. That's it, another video of just the Iron Islands. Subscribe to get our videos and we'll see you all next time. Bye everybody! Bye. Yeah,